This video is on metabolic liver disease. Here is the outline of the presentation. I will mainly talk about three types of metabolic liver disease. First one is non-alcoholic fatty liver and stethiohepatitis. Second is hemochromatosis. And third is alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So first for non-alcoholic fatty liver and stethiohepatitis. There are two types which are the NAFL and NASH. For non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, it is characterized by increase in serum transaminase and hepatic stethiosis in the absence of heavy alcohol consumption. That's why it's called non-alcoholic. And it is associated with diabetes, obesity, pregnancy, drugs like methotrexate and steroids, metabolic syndromes like Cushing syndrome and also hyperthyroidism. Whereas for non-alcoholic stethiohepatitis, it is characterized, also has hepatic, hepatic stetosis, which means there's increased fat in the hepatocytes, and there is inflammation, causing the stetohepatitis, with absence of heavy alcohol consumption. And the underlying pathology for this stetohepatitis, you'll see that the hepatocytes contain fat vacuoles, varying amount of fibrosis, and also might see some inflammatory infiltrates. Moving on to the next metabolic disease, which is the hemochromatosis. In hemochromatosis, there is excessive iron accumulation, with subsequent deposition of the iron in various organs, especially in the liver and pancreas. Besides liver and pancreas, there are also other organs that can be deposited with iron as well, where I will talk about it later. There are two types of hemochromatosis, which are the primary and secondary hemochromatosis. So for primary hemochromatosis, it is also known as hereditary hemochromatosis. So the inheritance pattern is autosomal recessive pattern. Male is more common than female, where the ratio is very significant, 6 to 1. And if in female, it is diagnosed later because menstruation has shown to offer protection towards this disease. For clinical features of primary hemochromatosis, Patient might have skin pigmentation, slight grey appearance, anterior pituitary gland. If the iron is deposited in the anterior pituitary gland, the patient might complain of delayed puberty. There might be hypogonadism, amenorrhea, impotence or decreased libido, and also testicular atrophy. And it can also cause pituitary failure, which cause hypopituitarism. If the iron is deposited in the liver, it can cause hepatomegaly, causing liver cirrhosis, and can also progress to hepatocellular carcinoma. In pancreas, it will cause diabetes mellitus. If the iron is deposited in the heart, it can cause cardiomyopathy or arrhythmia. And for musculoskeletal system, it can cause pseudogout as well. Whereas for secondary hemochromatosis, it is due to repeated blood transfusion or increase in iron intake. So repeated blood transfusion can be commonly seen in those who have thalassemia major, aplastic anemia, sickle cell disease, myelodysplastic syndrome, leukemia or lymphoma. So they are exposed to the risk of secondary hemochromatosis. For increased iron intake, it can be due to iron dextrin injections. To investigate for hemochromatosis, we can do iron studies to look for high transferrin saturation and high ferritin levels. Ultrasound of the liver to look for any signs of hepatocellular carcinoma because it is the commonest cause of death. Liver biopsy is diagnostic investigation to measure the liver storage of iron and genetic testing as well. For treatment of hemochromatosis, you can do early venesection, which is phlebotomy. And it is beneficial especially in those who have not developed diabetes or liver cirrhosis. It actually prolongs the life and reverses tissue damage and also prevents the progression of hepatic disease by removing excessive iron levels. So moving on to the third metabolic liver disease, the alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. The inheritance pattern is autosomal dominant pattern. 
and it is characterized by abnormally low, low levels of alpha-1 antitrypsin. Clinical features, the patient will present with liver cirrhosis, or if there is chronic progression, can cause hepatocellular carcinoma. They can also present with COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And to investigate for this alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, we can do liver biopsy to look for past positive cytoplasmic globules in the peripotal hepatocytes. For treatment, definitive treatment is liver transplantation, and we should also advise the patient to quit smoking if they are a smoker. That's all for this video. Thank you.